Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at this thing here. Now this is the Swordfish from Atom RC. Now it isn't out as such yet. This is still, I would say, kind of a pre-production unit. I think the actual model itself is the final version, but in terms of some of the cool stuff inside that we'll get into in a moment, I'm not sure it's the very latest and greatest. Now, I am a fan of Atom RC. I like their stuff. There are a number of models that I am a big fan of. Things like the Atom RC Dolphin, as those of you that watch the channel will know it is my number one favourite wing slash plane at the moment. But there have been some other cool ones too. Things like the Atom RC Seal, things like the Atom RC Killer Whale, and the predecessor to this, something called the Atom RC Flying Fish, which was a little baby twin. Now, I really liked that plane. It was a beautiful, gentle flying model, but it was a little bit too small to fit all your electronics in. So, it looks like somebody was listening, because now... We have its bigger brother. This is the Swordfish, which again, as you can probably see, hopefully on the screen, is another twin, but it is available in lots of different versions. One of which comes pre-installed with iNav. Under this little hatch here, we have a flight controller with iNav pre-installed, ready to rock and roll. However, as I'll get into more detail in a minute, sadly, the iNav setup on this pre-production unit is still kind of being refined and set up. So I'm gonna set this up as I would set up iNav. The only thing at the moment I'm doing is chasing Atom RC to let me know what things like the throws and stuff need to be. Because unfortunately in typical Atom RC fashion, the manual that exists at the moment is like their other ones where they are not great at putting things like throws in, in terms of millimetre travel for all the control services. However, I am feeding back everything that I'm finding with this thing to Atom RC, and they are listening, which is great. So let's have a look at this review unit. Let's have a look at what's actually here. Again, I'll talk a little bit about the iNav stuff, but I'd take that with a pinch of salt. A little bit disappointed that I can't review it as a kind of plug and play, ready to go iNav ship, which I think is what lots of people are looking for. But if we get to a stage where Atom RC can send me their iNav settings that I can put on the flight controller, I can try it out. So a couple of specs on this thing. This is a 1.2 meter wingspan. The length of this is 810 millimeters made from EPP foam. Uh, package is pretty small and compact. It's only 815 by 220 by 185 millimeters because each of the pieces are relatively slim. Motors on this 2004 2306 and the recommended prop it comes with for is a 7 by 4.5 inch. You see here that it has lights out at the ends of the wings, carbon fiber reinforcement. Uh, this little cable here for the light has popped out, but that's no big deal. We have the protector for the servo. I'm going to just reposition that one because that feels like it's slightly over to one side. And then we have the motor nacelle with the motor. The motor looks very similar actually to the ones at the back of my Atom RC Dolphin, which is interesting because that is a very, very efficient little flyer. Recommended battery for this is a 4S 5000 mAh pack or a 4S 21700 pack. Now that is going to be a heavy battery. So uh, testing here, you do need that. Now at the end of the wings, there are these connectors that you can plug the XT30 and all the connectors for the other pieces as well. But as we'll see in a moment, there aren't the corresponding pieces on the body, sadly. Now, Atom RC claim that this is going to be easy for beginners. It's going to be pre-tuned and pre-installed electronics. Now, as we're going to see, the electronics are installed. There are a couple of little issues. Uh, this definitely feels like a pre-production review unit here. So I'm going to more focus on the actual model itself rather than the iNav setup. Because as you can see here, things like the GPS is actually installed upside down. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm feeding all this back to Atom RC and I'm very excited to say they are listening. There is a landing, single landing wheel at the bottom and then under the canopy we have all these extra pieces. Now we have loads of bits of plastic here including a cover for that top hatch which is where you can put your analog VTX or your digital HD system if you wanted to put it there. There's also space in the nose for a camera. Now this is designed so you've kind of got auto launch mode is going to be set up with iNav, return to home, all that stuff is going to be in here and it's all hidden under this bottom hatch. There is 
uh, I guess it's kind of a version of the Matek F405. It kind of feels like that. And it's all wired and set up. I do like the fact they're using screws here to keep the hatches in. That's a great way to stop things flying off in flight. Only other things in here, we have the tail pieces as well. So in terms of putting it together, it's not too tricky at all. The only remotely tricky thing is the connection of the rear V-tail pieces. You need to dab a glue for uh, the wing fence thing that goes underneath, and you need a very long driver for the screws to, to screw the two V-tail pieces around a carbon spar reinforcement piece at the back, and then you connect the push rods. Loads of cool places on this for all of the various parts. I cut out the bottom of the recess at the top, designed for an analog VTX, and I mounted my FR Sky receiver in there because I'm actually going to put walk snail in mine. But there's still space on top of that if you wanted to put your VTX on there, and that airflow up there is also going to keep it nice and cool. There are lots and lots of options on this for where to put your FPV equipment with the camera in the nose. There is also the space on the top for your HD FPV system. I'm really impressed that Atom RC have thought about where all those model electronics need to go. In terms of the iNav setup, as I said in the introduction, it's tricky for me to comment about that because the iNav setup that came with it has already been superseded. They sent me another setup, but that one I don't think is particularly great. They are working hard, they assure me, so that when it is released, both the iNav setup and the manual that goes with it is going to be of a much higher quality than normal for Atom RC, which is going to need to be, because let's be honest, the people who buy this model are going to be those who want a simpler experience using iNav than having to watch seven or eight iNav for beginners videos on channels like this. But here's just a little list of the things that I found in this initial setup that I've already fed back that need to be tweaked. The GPS return to home failsafe wasn't set up. The control surface movement was way too much for this model. The preset default control surface positions aren't done. The modes tab is overly complex and very messy. It can be simplified dramatically for a first time pilot. The on-screen display was the same way and there's no simple guide for what ports are needed for what. I had to kind of figure that out through the simple wiring diagram of the manual that exists right now. UARTs 1 and 3 should be available to do something else like my smart port telemetry but I'm struggling to get them to work with SBUS and checking with Atom RC most of their testing appears to have been with CRSF receivers which is interesting because that's going to be great for Express LRS it's going to be great for Crossfire, but if you already have invested in those systems, you're probably going to be a pilot that's probably happy to have a go at iNav from a scratch build anyway. I think it needs to be simpler and have options for all the basic standard setups, just like the Matex system site does. So at the moment, you get a flight controller that's installed and set up. Um, I'm going to flip over the GPS in this one here. And I'm going to spend some time going through this setup piece by piece and setting up as I would in my iNav for Beginners series. However, again, feeding all this back to Atom RC and they assure me that when it is released and available for the public, it is going to have that plus a very good manual. I hope so because I couldn't find things like what the throws were for this model. So I'm eyeballing that. In terms of adding my HD FPV, I've decided to install Walk Snail in this. Uh, I am really enjoying the Walk Snail system and I wanted another plane, as I said at the beginning. So I didn't want to put it on the back at the top, as the website shows, because unfortunately that means then you are looking across the top of the model, down the nose, out into the world. And the whole point for me of having a twin or a pusher is that the props are out of the way and it gives a beautiful unobstructed view of the world that you can enjoy in glorious HD. So I have modified mine uh, because the camera will fit in the nose. There's enough room in front of the big battery for central gravity for the walk snail unit. So what I've done is I have cut the nose off at an angle so that there is no, no nose in the view. I 3D printed the cover and cut some channels in here for airflow that's going to help keep the walk snail unit cool because all HD systems run nice and warm. And I've also cut some exhaust holes in the canopy so that the air coming in can be exhausted out as well. And hopefully that will keep the walk snow unit nice and cold and I won't have any issues with that. 
In terms of the center of gravity, again, this is a 21700, 4200 milliamp hour lithium ion pack. Uh, this is the weight of that pack. And in the nose, in this position, I can get the center of gravity spot on. So this isn't one of those that you can pop in your little 2200 4S pack and it's gonna balance. This will take a monster battery and it will need it for central gravity. But that's exciting because it means that that potentially is going to translate with some efficient flight, hopefully, into some nice long flight times. So there's lots of things that I love here in this early review unit, and I think we need to look at it as that. INAV isn't ready to go out of the box, but there is a huge amount to like. I like the fact that there is that space for that huge battery. I like the fact that INAV is installed and the motors, ESCs, and servos are all wired up. You just have to connect the control rods for the rear V-tail. I love the fact there's loads of room for all the modern elements, flight controllers, battery, FPV kit, whether that's analog or HDFPV, with different places and different options that you can pop them in and I do like the looks of this thing I know some don't like v-tails but I think they look fantastic and I think this is going to look amazing in the sky whether or not it's going to have any wag we'll see the removable wings for transport with a super simple latch to undo are fantastic Again, I would have preferred it to have some kind of connection mechanism on the body. So as you snapped it home, all the electrical connections were made. But I guess what they're doing here is they're making it so that in the event of a crash, that latch can be popped by the force of the crash and the wing can come undone and that there's enough slack on the cables that it comes with so that it doesn't pull cables out of the flight controller. I like the fact it's got LEDs on the tips of the wings and it comes with spare props as well. I love the fact it also comes with a separate FPV canopy. So if you wanted to, that's another place that you could pop your bits and pieces on. And that might be a place that I pop an action camera on in future. And that also means that with an action camera, you could then use a lighter battery and still easily get your central gravity. Separate analog FPV cover with an antenna mount and cooling at the top. The lots and lots of stuff in here that just keeps making me smile. And the fact that it's simple to put together and it has the CG marks molded on the underside of the wings just mean that it's ticking lots and lots of boxes. There are only a few things to be aware of. Again, the manual as it exists right now is very poor and I fed back all of my findings and recommendations to AtomRC and it does appear they're listening. You will need a very long hex driver for the screws to attach the V-tail. Again, that's not provided in the kit. It took me some routing around to find one that would work. And again, there aren't the other connectors on the body to automatically make all those electrical connections I've already said. And the only last thing is the props are pretty big and will catch the ground. So this isn't one of those things that you can do a rolling takeoff. This is definitely going to be a hand launcher where you're coming in to land with hopefully the prop stopped and out the way of the ground. So there we have it, that's the overview. I am very, very excited to see how this flies. If it flies like I hope it will, this is gonna be a great model. Now, a while ago, I was asking for recommendations for a great FPV ship, and this has come out and kind of ticked a lot of boxes for me. So I really, really hope it flies as fab as it looks. So if you're already an INAF pilot, this is gonna be a cool way to potentially add something into your fleet that's a twin that breaks down that has lots of different options to add your FPV stuff in. But what I'm excited about is that Atom RC do what I hope they do, which is create a very simple, easy plug and play setup with iNav with a great manual by the side, which shows a newer, less accomplished pilot how to set their radio up and plug their receiver in. That's going to be amazing because I think lots of pilots would really love to have a more almost ready to fly or kind of plug and play model with INAV in. And this could be the start of a more standard setup that we start to see where models come with both INAV and Arduplane available as an option. And for me, that would be the ultimate. If when this finally comes out, it is available to buy as a plane and the experience is kind of like me having it, setting it up, tuning it, dialing it in, and then kind of setting up your radio for you and handing you the model to use with your goggles, having that kind of experience where you can just buy it and have that kind of goodness uh, would be great. And I know lots of pilots out there who love the idea of iNav but just don't want the complexity. This could be a cool way to do it. But again, this is available without the iNav goodness. So you could get a cheaper version 
and do all the setup yourself. Stay tuned for the maiden. I just need the wind and the rain to stop long enough that we can have a go at this. Hopefully it's going to go better than the last maiden we did, uh, but hopefully with this being foam, it'll bounce a little bit more. But it'd be nice to have another walk snail model in the fleet, and I hope this flies as well as it looks. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.